One of the presents I received for Christmas, one of the things that I really wanted, was a copy of the new book, Rowdy the Roddy Piper Story. This is the brand new book about the life and career of the late Rowdy Roddy Piper. You know, very few people actually have the opportunity to look back on their life and their career, the choices they made, either good or bad. That was the intention of this book. Roddy intended to look back at his life, his career, the choices he made and lay it all out open to the public. Sadly, of course, Roddy passed away in July 2015 just shortly after he began the project, so he was unable to do this. His children picked up the baton and decided to finish this project as a tribute to him, and that is how the book has came about. The book begins with an intro. Actually, it's set on the night of WrestleMania 2 in 1986 recounting one of Roddy's most famous feuds between himself and the actor, Mr. T. It recounts the story of the rivalry between the two of them, especially the events since the last WrestleMania, the very first one on March 31st, 1985. And then, of course, it recounts the events of that very famous boxing match that Roddy had with Mr. T, describing what happened once they got into the ring. The book then begins properly with a more intimate and more detailed look at Roddy's life, at Roddy's childhood, than has ever been presented publicly before. The book lasts around about 370 pages in total, with a few extra pages uh, as an index. So if you're looking for a particular wrestler or, uh, say, Jabaruk, otherwise known as Johnny Rods, then you can look up his name and see where he's mentioned. But this book, it is genuinely a more detailed and more intimate look at Roddy's childhood than has ever been presented before. Roddy has never really talked about his childhood. Uh, It's always one of the things that's been a bit of a mystery when it comes to Rowdy Roddy Piper, the exact details of his childhood. And in this book, it's very well documented, thanks to the trip that he made across Canada, visiting his sister, his mother, and other relatives shortly before his passing, there are many great stories of Roddy's young childhood as it is charted through the book. Uh, The stories of his relationship with his father, Stanley, who actually worked as a policeman for the uh, National uh, Canadian Railway Service, which saw the family move several times while Roddy was still very young. And we read about The effects that those movings had on Roddy, his interactions with the people that he met, uh, also with his family, and it's also a little bit sad that long has been talked about Roddy splitting from his family at a young age, and it's the strained relationship that he had with his father, Stanley, you see how that strained relationship led to Roddy having more and more um, uh, nights away from the family home and the eventual split that Roddy had with his family and how he moved out on his own. Moving on into his uh, later years, we also hear about though his good friendships, especially with a gentleman named Cam. Uh, they actually became friends after Roddy had a fight with Cam in Cam's garage. A very unusual way to become friends. Uh, very unusual way to become friends. Uh, but 
they became great friends. You can really get a great sense of the friendship there. And you hear about their stories as well together, their travels across Canada also. Uh, they're also the very unusual situations they got themselves into. They were pretty much bouncers at a burger bar at one point. And uh, all the unusual fights, the con men that they come across, uh, the very physical situations that happen to them you really get a sense as well as the story goes on especially if you pay attention to it and it's, like I said it's 370 pages you don't need to obviously read it all, all at once but I think it's very well written so that you really get a sense of the young Roderick Toombs the young child again you see the influences and obviously what that's what a person is they are a, a total of at least in part of all of the uh, experiences that happen to them and what they take away from those experiences and you really see the man that we all knew on television as Rowdy Roddy Piper come to bear come together come to be that total of all of his experience his life his experiences his relationships we really get to see the character and i'm still talking about before he became professional wrestler but we really do see the character the man become what really basically roddy piper uh, uh, become the adult that he was he always said himself he was a bit of a strange duck and that's what Roddy was but it is very it well so well written that we get to at least what well, I do it, it, maybe perhaps it's because I was such a huge fan I'm still a huge fan of Roddy Piper but you really do see get to see that character come together which is really the essence of one of the essences of this book as the book progresses, of course, Roddy becomes a professional wrestler. And here is another one of the th ongoing themes in this book. And that is the truth and fiction separated. We get to see the separation between truth and fiction. And that, again, that's one of the themes that Roddy was going to have in this book. Was, was to separate fact from fiction. You know, with well-known people there is always rumors and innuendo there's always suggestions of this happening that happening and that is a very str strong case in this book and i'll get to that in a moment or two but as roddy begins his res pro wrestling career we get to hear exactly how he genuinely did start his career and his struggles not only to be accepted which is of course, one thing that Roddy said, he always felt um, that you know, one of the places that um, he really struggled to be, uh, be accepted, uh, but was accepted finally, was professional wrestling. And we get to hear that in stories with the likes of Jabba Rook, a.k.a. Johnny Rods, and then all his colleagues. And we also get to see Roddy form his personal and professional opinions. You know, we get to see how he, how the attitudes that he had about, obviously, mostly famously, you know, not losing a great deal, how all of those opinions came about, how he saw wrestlers being treated by promoters, how wrestlers were treated in general, and how they all treated each other. So, we really do get to see uh, Roddy's opinions once again form and become the man that he was. And obviously, through his, uh, through his especially with young Roddy, we see him travel to various different wrestling territories, whether it be places like Minnesota, Texas, Los Angeles, and one of the most famous days of his career was Los Angeles, and I think... Still, one of my favourite stories is when he was supposed to play the Mexican National Anthem on the bagpipes, but instead played La Cucaracha. Still one of my favourite stories, is again recounted in this book, and I have to say at this point, I also have, lucky enough to have a signed copy of it, In the Pit with Piper, 
the previous book I wrote, written about six, uh, about 11 years ago, about 2005, I believe it came out. I'm sure it's still available in places to purchase. It's a great accompaniment to this book as well because that book was entirely written, uh, at least uh, in part. You know, obviously you get people. They have people to. Uh, Roddy had somebody to help put it together, but uh, that was Roddy telling his story uh, about his career uh, from his perspective. And in this book, because Roddy's passed away, it's written in a proper perspective of the stuff that he left that he was going to be uh, putting in this book to also uh, the podcast that he did, interviews that he did, and also contributions from people like Bret Hart, uh, Bruce Pritchard, The Big Show, Judo Jean LaBelle, and many others that knew Roddy throughout his life and career. As I said, once he gets into pro, uh, long later into his pro wrestling career, we hear stories from the WWE, the WCW, including a great story, uh, I think, one of the stories that stuck with me, was when he did a promo in the ring, uh, I'm sure it's on the WWE Network, with Hulk Hogan, uh, and Hulk Hogan verbally tore into Roddy, and Roddy had his young son Colt with him, and that's one of the, another one of the great things about this uh, book. Also, is that you see the, the relationships between himself and his family. Not only his wife Kitty, and how much he obviously they loved each other, how they got together, in fact, and uh, the the story of their relationship, but also the relationship between himself and his children, and not just while. They were very young as well. There's a great uh, touch in the, in the book of that you know, the story that there's a few stories about him and his relationship with his children when they were more grown. Uh, obviously, Roddy's children are quite grown the, uh, these days. He had four children: uh, Anastasia, Fallon, Ariel, and Colt. And you hear a few couple of stories as we go through the book of. Not only their interaction with their when they were children, uh, I believe it was Ariel, uh, I hope I'm correct in this, when he came back one time from a WCW event, when the NWO had spray painted him in the ring, and there were still remnants of the paint left as he looked out one day out the window of his home, and it was one of the realisations for Ariel about how about what she'd seen the previous night on television with her father getting beat up. But there are stories of, there's other, well, it's great stories of her with her father, such as uh, the time that he accompanied her to a rooftop party. And there's other fantastic stories uh, about, the, again, the relationships in their later years of Roddy with his children. There is also a quite shocking part of this book, and to be honest, I have to commend the bravery of Piper's family for including this, but as I said, and as we are all aware, Roddy passed away on July 31st, 2015. Told in this book, much to my surprise, shock, I admit, and... But though I, get, I have to say it's very courageous to do this and obviously to debunk any myths, conspiracy theories, any stupid rumours and innuendo is the story of Roddy's passing. The story of Roddy's body being discovered and Roddy and Kitty's children being uh, made aware of his passing is also told in this book. It's a very difficult passage to read about. It's a very difficult thing for major fans like myself to to read, but that story is told in the book. Now, that may shock, surprise uh, people. It's, again, it's in the book to really debunk any myths, to really say this is genuinely what happened. There's no... no because quite often when events like that happen, though... People always come up with a theory. People always come up, well, did this happen? Did that happen? 
That is obviously put in the book again, once again, and it's third for the third time. That is obviously put in the book, the story of what happened, what genuinely happened, because I have, because I thought, truly believe that what is put in the book is what happened. It's the simple story of what happened. Is there to let people know exactly what happened? After reading this book, I had a couple of different thoughts. Firstly, obviously it's a great shame that Roddy never had the opportunity to finish this. As I said, many people don't get the opportunity to look back at their life, their career, the choices they made, either good or bad. But I also partially thought and still think that maybe that's slightly a bit of a good thing. That Roddy never had the opportunity to separate the fact from fiction, to tell the truth behind many of the stories of his life. So that mysterious aura will always be present when people talk about the life and times of Roderick Toombs, known to millions around the world as Rowdy Roddy Piper. There will always be that mysteriousness about him. Perhaps that's something that he may have wanted. That when people talk about all of their stories, whether they witnessed them themselves, whether they heard it from a third party or a fourth party or a fifth or sixth party, or even seen the uh, you know, some of Roddy's career on the likes of the WWE Network, the truth exactly about those times will never truly be known. And perhaps that's a good thing that the mysteriousness about Rowdy Roddy Piper will always be present. Roddy was truly, and I'm not just saying that, one of the biggest stars in professional wrestling. He's a WWE Hall of Famer. And I thoroughly recommend this book. It's one of the absolute better wrestling biographies that I have read. And it is a great look at his entire life and career. I would say if you're a wrestling fan, even if you're weren't a huge fan of Roddy, but then again, surely everybody was. But even if you're a young wrestling fan, get into the wrestling industry nowadays. Seeing the likes of Dean Ambrose's The Kevin Owens on television now, I would thoroughly recommend this book as a great look at the life of a wrestler. Roddy was, as he said himself, and a bit of an odd duck, a very unique person, and I truly believe that this is absolutely going to be one of the very best attempts to really encapsulate the man, the myth, the legend that was Rowdy Roddy Piper.